Hey guys, Arlisha here and welcome to another video. Today I'm going to be showing you how I make my watercolor binder. I'm going to be getting out all of my ingredients here and you can also see my kind of grungy old teapot that we're also going to be using water from to make tea. I mean binder. <laughs> So you can see all of the ingredients I have here. I've got my gum arabic powder, glycerin, some local honey, and essential oil. This is clove oil, which is going to act as a preservative. I'm not going to even try and pretend that this isn't going to be exceptionally messy. Usually not this messy, but I kind of forgot when I first got all my ingredients together that I usually use a funnel to pour my powder into a measuring cup and I forgot the funnel. I didn't realize until the first mess that I usually use a funnel. It's not usually this crazy, but I'm the kind of person who once I'm making a mess, I just like forget about even trying to make less of a mess and I just go, well, there's already a huge mess. I'm just gonna keep making more of one. So the first ingredient I added was my gum arabic powder. I added one and a half cups to my large mason jar here. And then I'm going to add two cups of boiled distilled water to my jar. And it kind of looks like pancake batter at this point. At least I think it looked. Do you guys think it looks like pancake batter? I'm kind of adding my water in batches. You want to use distilled water when you're making binder because science and using the hot boiled water allows the gum arabic to start to dissolve right away. But I've also done this with room temperature distilled water. And because we are using um, gum arabic powder as opposed to the larger granule gum arabic crystals, it's still going to dissolve easily even if you're just using room temperature water. As long as it's distilled water, that's an important thing. After I've got my water and my gum arabic powder, I'm going to add two tablespoons of glycerin, which was the first thing you saw, and I also am adding two tablespoons of honey. At this point, the ratios that I'm using for these different ingredients are still kind of experimental. If I can find the link to the recipe that I'm loosely going off of, I'll leave that down in the description. And really, I'm just logging every ingredient that I add in different batches of binder and then testing it out and seeing how that goes with the actual paint making. The last thing I'm going to add to this binder is two drops, just two little drops of that clove oil, and that's going to act as a preservative, which is going to keep our binder from going bad. And also, you got to keep this stuff in the fridge if you're going to be having this batch around for more than a week, and it'll last up to six months or so in the fridge. After that initial mixing, I like to let this sit out at room temperature without putting it in the fridge for maybe half an hour to an hour or so to allow that to kind of cool down and I can mix it every once in a while before I put it in the refrigerator and then I will let that sit in the refrigerator at least overnight before using it. Once that has been sitting and all of the gum arabic has had the opportunity to dissolve, it looks like this. As you can see, we have no more foam up top. All of our gum arabic powder has been completely dissolved. You can see a bit the viscosity of the liquid at this point. It does have some thickness to it while still remaining kind of relatively thin, definitely thinner than pre-made binders, at least the pre-made binders that I have attempted. And to be honest, I'm probably going to be experimenting with maybe making a thicker version of this binder, seeing if I can add more gum arabic powder or trying gum arabic in a different form, like those crystals I mentioned before, adjusting my ratios and seeing if I need my binder to be thicker. I'm not really sure yet. I've been pretty happy with the paint I've gotten from this binder, even though it's a bit thinner so far. Before I jump into showing you a painting that I did with my handmade watercolors, I want to show you the difference that the ratios of binder to pigment can make in the finished look of handmade watercolors. So the cobalt teal on the left has much more pigment in relation to the amount of binder, while the quinacridone magenta on the right has less pigment. So there's more binder. There's a higher binder to pigment ratio in that red than in the blue. So more pigment kind of gives it a a firmer, more solid, more matte finish to the paint, while paints that have 
more binder and less pigment tend to lay much flatter and be a little bit shinier. While these paints may differ in, you know, the look and finish of the paint in the pan, I've found that they both reactivate really nicely and I'm still able to get really nice color and I think it gives a nice handmade touch to see that not every pan looks exactly the same. We're not dealing with mass produced factory paints here, which of course professional paints are amazing and fantastic. I think it gives a bit of character to the handmade paints to kind of see how each color differs. I will say that I can't really attest to whether or not the paints with a higher ratio of pigment with more pigment to binder will last longer in a half pan. I don't know, I haven't really used quite enough to be able to make a sound judgment call on that. I'm able to get nice rich color from the paints either way and really if you tried to stuff more pigment in it would just rub off or the paint would be really grainy. There are just some pigments where you just don't need as much pigment to have everything evenly dispersed in your binder. I've had this footage for this piece recorded for you guys for a while now. I wanted to fit it into my first paint making video, but that video just got a bit long and I didn't have time. And I'm really, really excited to share this piece with you guys. I think that when I originally did it, I hadn't yet announced that I was making my own watercolors. So I didn't say that this one was made with my handmade paints. You may have already seen this piece if you're following me over on Instagram. And so I'm really, really excited to be able to share it with you guys here. If you are interested, I do have this original available for sale on my shop as well as prints of this one so you guys can check that out if you'd like. And while we're talking about my shop, I'll let you guys know that I just launched some new prints in the last couple of weeks and just yesterday, well, Monday, it'll be a couple days for you guys. I created a brand new sticker pack that I'm really proud of and really excited about. And a great big thank you to those of you who have already purchased a sticker pack. I Stickers are one of my favorite things to put together. They're so much fun to create. And I hope that you guys will check out my shop if you're interested in any of that fun stuff. A lot of you guys have been asking me if I am planning to sell my handmade watercolors. I wasn't really sure in the past. And I can tell you guys now that I am going to to be selling them in some capacity. I have a plan for that and I will tell you the specifics. I will finally be able to talk to you guys about that soon in a future video. Not quite ready to tell you guys yet, but soon we will be able to talk about it. And I'm excited to have the opportunity to share these paints with you guys as much as I can. For this piece, I'm using a new to me um, watercolor paper. This is a hot press paper made by Canson. What's it called? What's the name of the paper? called yeah that one it's that paper I've been using this paper for a couple of larger pieces recently and I've been having so much fun with them I really really love working at this scale and I'm really happy with how my handmade watercolors performed for this piece another question that you guys had asked was whether or not I was going to be doing light fastness tests for these paints and I am in my window right over there where I'm looking you guys can't see I have a um, um, some swatches with one half of the swatch covered up sitting in the window and that has been there for a week or two now and a couple weeks couple weeks yeah that's been there for at least a couple weeks now and once it's been one month I will at least check in to see how those colors are doing and I'll be able to give you guys some information over time I'd like to give it a couple of months sitting in the window that's a south facing window so it's getting lots of light and I will be able to let you guys know what fades and what doesn't and how things are going I was really hoping that I would be able to include in this video the difference in binder results when you use gum arabic powder versus using the larger crystals. I ordered both at the same time, but the crystals were back ordered. So those are going to be here soon and I will be able to make a future video for you guys. My plan is to make a video comparing pre-made binders that you can buy from companies like Schmincke or Kramer, comparing that to my two different handmade binders, so the one with powder and the one with the crystals, and just kind of comparing them, looking at the consistency and the color, and we'll see what's different and what's the same, and that will be coming to you guys soon. I very much appreciate the support that you guys have been giving for the handmade watercolors as a whole. Some of you guys have been leaving really amazing tips, which I appreciate very much, and you've been leaving all of your questions for me. I'm going to try to answer as many of those as I can. My plan is to make videos about handmade watercolors. I'm 
I'm currently only able to do like one a month because I do have other video obligations, things that I either have to do or have agreed to do that I'm really excited about, of course, always. And also there are different types of content that I want to do. I don't want to just have only paint making videos. There are other things I want to share and talk to you guys about. So we're just kind of spacing things out and pacing the content. But overall, I'm just, I'm so, so, so excited to get to talk to you guys more about this and finally be able to share more about these paints because it's been fun. It's been really fun. The next paint making video that I'll make for you guys, which will probably be in May, will be an introductory video. So I'm going to talk about all of the supplies that you're going to need to get started making paints, where I get all of those supplies, and even a couple of tips on how to kind of cut corners on costs, because because some of these materials can be a bit expensive and you don't necessarily need to start with the most expensive equipment, especially if you're just trying this out as a hobby or you're not sure if you're going to really love paint making. So that will be the next one. leave links to all of the materials that I used to make my binder as well as a list of all the specific ratios and measurements that I used for this specific batch of binder down in the description so you guys can check that out. Once again I do have this original for sale on my shop if you're interested as well as prints for this piece and all kinds of new prints and new stickers so the shop link will be down in the description as well. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any other questions about handmade watercolors or how to make binder, please do let me know and I will answer as many of those as I can and I will see you all next time. Bye guys!